more minute. And I think we can now start. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to American University of Armenia's webinar on Our Planet textbook presentation. And I hope that you're all safe and healthy. My name is Adeo Vasapian. I'm the Education Projects Manager in British Council Armenia. And I'm going to be your moderator for this session. Thank you so much for joining this webinar in which uh, you're going to be presented a textbook, Our Planet, which is jointly produced by AUA, and it aims to help English language teachers and learners to teach or learn English around environmental issues. Just for your information, this webinar is divided into two parts. In the first part, our speakers will introduce you to the textbook, will tell us about the rationale behind it and how, uh, what work was done to bring it into life. And then in the second part, the book authors will demonstrate how the content of the textbook can be used uh, effectively uh, to, to deliver it to the students. Um, on this note, uh, let me introduce you to our speakers. Uh, so uh, please meet Alan Amirkhanian, the director of the AUA Akopian Center for the Environment. Uh, Dr. Ishat Madyarov, chair of the master's program in teaching English as a foreign language and director of the Center for Research in Applied Linguistics at AUA. Diana Torosian, who is the author of the textbook and an uh, MA TEFL alumna class of 2016. And finally, Dr. Shushana Vakian, an assistant professor in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and the director of AUA Press. So please do stay with us for the next 45 minutes or so, and we hope you will find this session uh, helpful. Now, before we start, two quick reminders. Please note that we are video recording this session so that it can be shared with anyone who's missing this live session. And also, please note that we are going to have quick, uh, quick and, uh, sorry, sorry, question and answer session at the end of each part so that you can ask whatever question you may have from the speakers. But just note, because everybody's on mute here, uh, to ask your questions, you need to use the chat function of the Zoom platform. Or if you're on Facebook, then you have to leave your questions as comments. And then we will try to collect them and we will address them by the speakers. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, and without further ado, uh, over to you, Alan, to start. Thank you very much, Ade. Uh, I want to welcome all of you uh, to this webinar uh, for uh, uh, launching the, uh, a book that has been several years in the making. Uh, it has been a collaborative effort between the uh, TEFL program and Diana Torres Young uh, started this idea as part of her um, capstone thesis project uh, in the master's thesis, uh, TEFL program. And um, uh, when Irshad approached me and, and suggested that maybe there is something with uh, content here that we can collaborate on, uh, especially piloting the teaching of the of the course in various uh, rural communities. Uh, we had a, a grant program at the time uh, through which we were able to support the piloting of the teaching and, and, and based on the piloting, the textbook was improved. Um, and I guess more, Diana uh, and Irshad will talk more about the, the, the development of the textbook. Um, but also what was very welcome was the idea that different parts of the university collaborate together. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, center for uh, that Irshad is leading on, on uh, uh, languages, I'm sorry, I'm blanking out on the name of the center, uh, uh, CORAL, and um, that's the acronym, and the Akopian Center for the Environment. Um, uh, uh, collaborated to uh, make this book possible. Um, we brought in uh, environmental expertise to review the content of the book, uh, the graphic design of it, um, and, and uh, various reviews and piloting of it, as I mentioned. So it was truly a collaborative effort, but of course the bulk of the work was done by Diana and Irshad in, in writing the textbook. And I also have to uh, uh, thank our donors, which uh, whose financial support made this book possible. Linda Shahinian, who has joined us, and uh, her husband, uh, Herb Schiff, were uh, uh, very generous, both not only with money, but also Linda with her time and uh, reviewing. She is uh, an, an accomplished um, uh, text uh, proofreader and, and you know, editor, so 
She's done that for many years, so she volunteered her time also in reviewing the, the uh, previous versions, initial versions of the book. So uh, thank you, everyone. This has truly been a collaborative effort, and uh, I look forward to the remaining of the session today. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, over to you, Shad. Thank you, Ade. So welcome, everyone. Great to see many of the familiar faces. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, an exciting milestone in this long-term project for all of us, for me especially. Uh, I happen to be the second author, which is a huge privilege for me. Diana, thank you for doing such a great job. But I think I also wanted to highlight on my end, on, on behalf of the Teaching English as a Foreign Language program, on behalf of the Center for Research and Applied Linguistics, which is the acronym for CROW, um, uh, the, the, uh, what we call at AUA the, a reality lab, Centers of Excellence, which is an important uh, two concepts that we try to develop in the uh, recent, recently, more recently, going into the future with our strategic planning. I think this is a great example uh, where we try to bring together a lot of human resources, a lot of human talent, not only from within the university, but also outside in the larger community with a lot of stakeholders in an effort to create some value uh, out there in the community where we bring the expertise from professionals uh, at the AUA, those people that understand and develop curriculum, how to work with children. Um, and so then in our case, the partners that we have worked with closely uh, at the risk of uh, meeting some of them were uh, the Peace Corps volunteers. Many of them have helped us uh, not only with the proofreading of the uh, original earlier copies of the book, but also with uh, some of the delivery and, and some of the logistics in the villages where the book was piloted. Um, Children of Armenian uh, um, Fund, uh, COAF, was also very instrumental in connecting us with the uh, school directors where the uh, books were public, um, piloted. Um, but also, again, Alan spoke earlier, this uh, happened to be also the grant opportunity for us that we were able to draw upon through the Norwegian Embassy. Uh, so there's a lot of different um, uh, partners in the community that were able to uh, help uh, spearhead this uh, project. And I think to end, I just wanted to say that, Diana, your project, I think is a great example of a capstone uh, uh, project that uh, really is not just a project that helps a student learn and know how to go about creating a textbook or how to uh, teach children, uh, but also brings together along the way a lot of people to create something bigger than just uh, a learning opportunity for one particular student. So I think it's a, great, it's a very good example. And uh, I want to thank you all for this and especially Diana. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Majarov, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. So uh, first, I would like to start with uh, thanking Dr. Majarov and Alina Mekhanyan for their support and investment, and that they continue to work on this book, because I'm sure that without your help, we wouldn't, this book wouldn't have happened. So thank you so much. And thanks to the donors, too, Linda Shahinyan and her chief, because we have the hard copy of the book. And by the way, it's uh, here with me. Uh, this is the book. <laughs> And thank you so much, and thank you, Shushan, for helping us with the publication process because it was really very important. Thank you. So now let me proceed and uh, just briefly introduce some websites and books and tell you the short story about uh, the book. So um, let's have a look here and start with how did we came up with this idea? How did we come up with this idea? So. I was studying at te Teaching English as a Foreign Language program, and it was in 2015 that we had to already come up with the topics for our capstone projects. And before that, we already had learned a lot about different approaches to language teaching. And it was also the time uh, when I had the course conducted by Alain Amikhanyan, and that course was called Natural Environment and Humans. So I was really impressed and it was the first time I really got interested in this topic and I thought it would be really interesting 
to integrate this content into uh, language teaching. So this is where we started to uh, design the activities and generally design the book. So after we had the initial version of the book uh, with the help of Applicant Center for the Environment, we participated in an environmental education micro project competition. And me and one of my friends, Anna Laverzian, we were one of the winners. And here you can see uh, that we've got some information about the project. Also, this grant opportunity, uh, this grant was an opportunity to pilot the book in, uh, in our Mavi region. We piloted in two villages, in Hatik village and Karakert village. If you're interested in, I can share this link with you and you can find more information here. Other than that, um, I, we've got also another website. Uh, it's, this, is, this one is called Let's Go Green and Learn English. In this website, we have collected all of the pictures from our pilot process, from our classes. So we did tree planting in the villages. You can find some information here and some pictures from our classes. They did a cleanup also. And so if you're interested, a lot of information you can find in these both websites. And now when we have the whole book ready, Alcopian Center for the Environment has created a website to the book. Uh, just let me show you it. Uh, it is called Our Planet. So it is here. You can go to this website and you can find all the additional materials that you need and the textbook itself is online. You can see it here. So if you click here, you can see the book uh, is, down, is in, in its downloadable version. You can download it and you can teach it. So let me show you that other than the book itself, uh, we have the textbook, but other than it, uh, we also have two other additional materials. We have teaching teacher's manual, which includes printouts, answer keys, and additional information how to conduct some projects and activities. And also we have teacher slides, and it basically inclu includes some vocabulary and listening activities. So this is it. And, um, so let me go through the book a little bit. So this is the book and you can see here we've got the scope and sequence. In the book we have three main units. The first unit is about the Earth's surface. The next one is about the Earth's natural resources. And the last one is about the Earth's atmosphere. And in all of the units we try to boost students' receptive and productive skills. But other than that, we also have six projects. These are hands-on projects, so students do not do this in the classroom. They just go outside and conduct the projects. And the aim of these projects is we, we just want to uh, foster their sense of citizenship. So they go out, do, uh, they plant trees, they conduct some surveys, they save water and then come back to class and they discuss the results with their teachers. And so this is it. And then you can see that we've got the first unit. Here it starts with biomes. Uh, students learn about the biomes. You can see here we have vocabulary activities. And then we have some listening activities, reading activities. So the units continue one after another. And you just can go through it through the website when you go to the website. So this is it. And um, in the website, we also, other than the book, you also can download the teacher's manual. You can see this here, teacher's manual and teacher slides. So other than this, we have also developed, uh, created four videos. Two of them are for listening activities and two of them are for writing activities. But these are active YouTube links. So when you click on them, it just takes you to the YouTube video. So students just watch it and then they need to answer the questions or do some writing. So this is it. And also, yeah, let me talk about the research report. Just tell you that we have also a research report. So in the research report, we talk about the pilot process as well as we introduce what the content and language integrated course is, how important environmental education is. And also we have some recommendation about teachers how to conduct the course effectively. So basically, this is it. Um, I think this much, I hope I didn't forget anything. Yeah, this is it. Thank you. And I'll probably take it from here, yeah? Uh, yes. yes, thank you, Diana. Um, thank you all for joining us, um, especially at this very stressful time. <laughs> Um, actually, we were planning on having a real face-to-face -face event, and we actually had a date set for it. April 17th was going to be um, 
our launch date where we're going to have um, some wine and cheese and have you all over um, at Akyan Gallery. But as you know, things turned <laughs> differently. And now we're meeting through the webinar, which is probably a better idea. But um, yeah, Diana showed us the book and we were going to have the physical copies at, uh, at the book launch and we were going to hand them distribute them to those who are interested. So that's not happening. However, we have other plans, uh, other way of uh, organizing the distribution. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, but uh, basically this is AUA Press's very first uh, book, uh, if you will. Um, AUA has been publishing um, books in the past as a, as a university. It has different departments have been publishing. Uh, various uh, volumes uh, sporadically within the 29 years we probably have a dozen books that we can show. Um, we created AUA Press so that we can mainstream it so that we can sort of have uh, a more organized structure and we can actively um, go after specific books and we can actively encourage our faculty, staff, centers and departments. Predominantly, we're focused on serving as a platform for, for various university bodies to produce, to create, to publish their research and to collaborate with one another. And uh, we were extremely lucky to have this book as our first book because as you saw, it's a very multidisciplinary, it's a very rich experience and hands-on um, project that also involves uh, our communities and it serves our communities and especially uh, it, it serves um, communities that are going to be our future. So it was very important for us to, to take on this uh, project. And so I'm thankful to Alan for pitching it to me in the first place and um, uh, taking on this project. Um, uh, AUA Press does focus on uh, certain areas and environmental studies is one of our focuses. We also uh, are very interested in publishing works in critical theory studies, works in women and gender studies, uh, works research in uh, translation studies, diaspora studies, um, especially because these are areas that other presses in Armenia do not really tackle because these are areas that are not uh, really um, sort of uh, highlighted or are not really worked on. So we were thinking of bridging that gap and serving as that, um, that kind of publishing house. Um, um, we are very interested in works that are collaborative, that bring entities that are very, that, that, that are from different so-called disciplines. And so we want to create hybridic works as such as this work is very hybridic. It's similar to other work that AUA has published in the past. For example, Hannah Arendt's uh, volumes that students translated and collaborated with faculty to produce a book. And so we're hoping that in the future we will be able to produce these kinds of hybridic texts that will bring different departments, centers, faculty, staff, alumni, staff producing together and perhaps even scholars from outside collaborating and producing knowledge um, and uh, work that is relevant to Armenia that is urgently needed and necessarily necessary in Armenia and for our communities predominantly. Um, that said, I just want to sort of acknowledge again and say thank you very much to our authors, Diana and Irshad, for producing this remarkable textbook. Um, I would like to thank our designer, Navarty Erganyan, who uh, worked hard two years um, for, for creating this really beautiful, the, the imagery and uh, uh, it's, it's very friendly and it's, it's, it's hands-on book it's something that you can interact that you write in and, and it's it's very sort of inviting for for its users to learn um, um, uh, i'd like to thank specifically suzanne davlian who actually worked hard on reviewing at the very last minute and sort of sort of um edit editing and and proofing it um, and uh, of course our don donors linda shainyan and herb schiff uh, for enabling us to, to produce this book. Um, uh, the copies are going to be distributed freely. We have a limited number of uh, copies. Uh, they are held at AUA. Um, we're actually very lucky that we have these books because it happened, the production of the books happens very much at the time of this rapid um, escalation of the epidemic. But the printing house was running 
and we were lucky to have them uh, sort of deliver it to AUA. So we have the copies um, and um, we are going to ask people to fill out a form, uh, the link of which will probably be shared on uh, in the chat room, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and interested parties can sort of just fill it out. It's a very simple uh, user-friendly um, uh, form in which you're stating your interest, why you're interested in, in having this book and how it's going to be used and how many copies you need of the book. Uh, and give us a contact so that we can contact you and organize the delivery of the books. Um, I will probably stop here and ask Ade to take over. Okay, thank you so much uh, everyone for this short and sweet presentation of the textbook. Congratulations on the achievement. It's really a great success. Uh, there are a number of questions coming through which I think are important to be addressed now. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm going to read them to you so that I won't change anything. So the first question um, is about uh, the content and the topics included uh, in the textbook. Diana, this is probably for you. So the question is, uh, uh, it is interesting to know how you chose the topics. Is the cho choice based on what students of that age cover in schools or is it based on what you thought might interest learners? Okay, so I remember that before we started to design the book, first of all, we did some research what books students use at schools. And what we found out that, for example, students talk about, for example, global warming or climate change. However, those topics were not that they were not studying all of those topics very deeply. And uh, yes, we did some research and we took some of the topics that they study at schools. However, we added to it. So because if you look at the book and if you th go through the activities, you will see they, that we focus on the problem and how the students can solve those problems. So through finding solutions, we try to also develop their critical thinking and solve problem solving skills. So this is, how, this is what we fo focused on in the very beginning. So we tried to not only tell them that there is this specific problem, but also we focused on that they are able to evaluate, uh, to be environmentally friendly and to kind of uh, suggest solutions to those problems. Thank you, Diana, very much. I wish it gets widely used. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. And uh, a relevant question um, to that, uh, does the book focus on local environmental issues or general issues? Uh, yes, we do both. So in one of our goals, we state, um, I would like to read it. Uh, just a second. So one of our goals is that uh, we need to make sure that the students understand the uh, cause and effect uh, relationship between local and global issues. So what we aim at here is to tell them whatever they do locally, it's going to have a global impact. So they need to take care of their own actions. So we do both. Okay, fantastic. And the next question is concerned with the target audience. So who are supposed to be the students in terms of yeah. age group and also in terms of language proficiency? Yeah, I forgot to mention. Yeah, it's, for, it's, age, uh, it's meant for 11 to 14 year, years old students. And just one extra, extra information, the recommended total hours of teaching is just 20 classes, uh, except for uh, excluding uh, projects, excluding them. Okay, fantastic. And Shushan, I think this question is for you. Are there any plans to distribute the book across Armenia? I think you addressed this, but if you can clarify again. Uh, I think at this point, what we want to do is we need, we want to ask, sort of get the word out and ask people who are interested in the book to send us a request in which they're explaining why they need it, because we have a limited number of the books. We want to make sure that it's, it's being used to purpose, that it's going to be used um, um, sort of in, in a right way. Uh, so we'll just wait to hear, and then I think we're gonna just um, ask Irshad and Diana to also use their own connections in terms of knowing what schools and, and what teachers might benefit from this textbook the most. So we're just gonna listen to, um, to the, the authors and, and also probably Alan Ace and, and see which communities are gonna need it and, and distribute it to them. Okay. Thank you, uh, Shushan, for the answer. Um, so I'm trying to kind of uh, merge the questions which are more or less similar. So there's a question about the online and the print version of 
the textbook. And the question is whether the online version will be available freely for everyone to use and whether uh, you are planning any uh, trainer training for the teachers so that they can use the materials effectively. It is probably for Diana or Arisha to answer the discussions. Oh, okay. Okay. So yes, uh, you can download the book and use it. It's absolutely free. Uh, so all the materials are download, uh, downloadable. So there is no problem with that. So about TOT, uh, so we are going to have a workshop, kind of workshop after this session, and I will go through one of the units and tell how teachers need to conduct it and introduce you the teacher's manual and teacher's slides if you're interested in. But I think if there is the need and if there is a company or a foundation that wants to separate, that wants to do uh, TOT separately, I think we can organize that if there is the need. Okay, sounds great. Um, Okay, let me see if there's any other question which may, I may have missed. Uh, okay, that's it probably. We covered everything. If there are any questions, I'm going to give you. Vardam, I think, had a question. Excuse me. Vardam, Delma Tebosan said I had a question, but we. Yes, he's unable to type down now, so I um, gave up the idea to ask the question. Okay, um, a final check for me. And then Sorry, just to, maybe this is redundant, but Linda Shahingan was asking, uh, uh, is there a fee for schools to use it online? Um, uh, Shushan, maybe you wanna address that. I don't think we've ever discussed the possibility of, of charging a fee for schools to use it. This is freely, openly available for everyone. Absolutely, yes. Great, I found another question here. Um, are you considering other ideas for English language learning paired with another subject matter? This is probably to Irshad. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, this project, uh, Diana's project, inspired us uh, to follow a similar path. And obviously, our TEFL students have produced a number of projects that have combined different kinds of disciplines, including dance and medicine. and uh, I mean, you name it, and many of them were also with a uh, very close partnership with the community. This one is probably exceptional in that it found light in, in the form of a book, actually, a text, uh, which, which obviously is uh, a lot of production, a lot of effort. But uh, to answer that question, we are now considering uh, working with uh, uh, AUA Press also and other uh, pro uh, programs departments here at the American University of Armenia, how we can combine different disciplines and see whether we can uh, come up with other similar books uh, and create a series uh, that will teach not only English, but other kinds of disciplines. Fantastic, thank you so much. Uh, okay, I think we are done. Yeah, yes, sorry. Sir. Uh, there's a suggestion by Sona Damian about creating an e-twinning project based on the book. Maybe we can get some explanation what that means and uh, address that, that idea, suggestion. Yep, um, I'm trying to find that comment. Yeah, I think I could quickly comment on that. Sona, yeah. I believe uh, we know each other very well. Um, so I think it's a great idea to plug in e-twinning here. We started working with them recently. I think it's a great space for uh, books like that. So we can definitely talk. Just let me know and me and Diana. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, sounds great. Um, just uh, to raise awareness that uh, we now have the link to the textbook in the chat box. So do copy it if you don't wanna miss it because people are uh, uh, typing down with their ideas. And I think uh, we can now move to the second part of this webinar. Uh, and I want to invite Diana Ishad to walk us through the textbook a little bit in more detail and let us know how the content can be used effectively for teaching purposes and what are the uh, tips and tricks that we need to bear in mind when we use the course book. Uh, okay, thank you, Ade. So uh, what we will do now is I will just go through one of the units, uh, which I think is the last unit. So I will go through it and just describe how each activity should be carried out. And if you have any questions, just type them and I will answer it later. So uh, uh, let me screen share. 
Okay, okay. So let's have a look here. This is the book that we've got, and this is the last unit of the book. So um, we, in this, the whole unit, the whole, this is the third unit, and the whole unit is about the Earth's atmosphere. But unit 3.4 is about global warming. So the first thing, and if you are familiar with the book, you will see that most, in, more, in most cases, we have learned the words with your teacher. And next to it, you can see TM, TS icon. And basically, there is no exercise here, right? So that means, and every time you see TM and TS, that means you need to use teacher slides or teacher's manual. So TM and TS, we've got, this is the teacher's slides. And here you can see that uh, we've got the activity here. So how do you need to use it? Every time you see TM, in the TM, you basically can find the reference, the slide number to the slides, the reference number to the slide. And because I already know, I've opened it to save some time. So here is the activity. Uh, how do you do that? So you make it bigger. And what you need to do is to read the words in a rhythmic way and the student needs to follow you. And when you see that students are confident enough to say all, the, all of the words clearly and they do not have any pronunciation errors, so you just uh, move the words out and you ask them to name the picture randomly. For example, what's the first picture? What's the second one? Or what's the third picture? So if they are able to do it, it means it's already time to move ahead and to do the second exercise. In the second exercise, we've got gap fill. Um, sorry, they need to find, uh, fill in the missing letters. So in this exercise, so one of the outcomes that we have is to make sure that students can engage in short, uh, in generally students can produce accurate writing on the level of words or short sentences. So that's why we think that this activity is really important because they can understand it, they can uh, recognize the words in speech and writing and in listening. This is really very important. And after that, we've got listening activity. So this is really interesting part because most of the listening activities in this book, uh, uh, teachers are supposed to read the listening text. For example, let me show you it. Uh, so here we've got this. So the listening text, there's no listening uh, audio that you need to play and the students need to listen. What teachers are supposed to do, they need to read the listening text. And you can find the listening text in the notes of each slide. Here you can see that we have the listening text and every time you talk about, you say a word or a phrase, for example, if teachers say people burn a lot of coal, so a teacher is supposed to show that picture and then cut down a lot of trees. Again, you need to show that picture so that we have, of course, this is the last unit and we expect that all the students will be able to understand what the words are and they can recognize the pictures. But in case they do not understand a word or a phrase, they can figure out what we're talking about by seeing the pictures. And so, if I may oh, just quick, quickly jump yes. in, I'm sorry for interrupting you. I, if you're meaning to be showing the slides, I don't think we see them. If that's what you're trying to say, there's some comments I see also from the audience. You don't see, they don't, do not see the we slides? We see the textbook. We see the textbook pages. Yes. We don't see the slides. Maybe oh, when you really? share. Uh -huh. Okay, just a second. I'll try to stop Thank and you. share again. <laughs> Nana, if you want to switch between different. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did. Okay. Yes, we'll you have to now. share your screen. Yes. Now, can you see? I think you can, right? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, we can. Good, cool. good, good. So uh, we've got the, again, we've got the listening text in the notes. Here they are, here it is. And every time you say like burn a lot of coal, you need to show that picture, cut down a lot of trees, you again need to show that picture to make it uh, more comprehensible to the students. So this is the listening uh, task. And we've got, sometimes we have two, one or two slides for listening. And this is the second slide for listening. Again, we've got the text here. Again, climate change is very bad. You read it and point out uh, to the words so that students can understand what we're talking about. So in the textbook, uh, if you go back to the textbook, you will see that we do not have any post-listening activities. Most of the post-listening activities are in the slides. So here you can see, this is a post-listening activity. 
So basically you need to give them the question and then the students, by looking at the pictures, they need to answer the questions. For example, how do people release too much greenhouse gases? And by looking at the pictures, they need to name those pictures. And usually we've got one or two slides for post listening activities. So this is it about the slides. Okay, let me show you the book now. Give me a second, please. Okay, we've got this. So uh, after the listening, uh, we have reading tasks. We have reading activities. And mostly uh, in the listening activities, what we need to do, what we aim at is to prepare students for the reading activity. And uh, in listening and reading activities, the topic is the same and the text is quite similar to each other so that the students do not get confused and it is easier to get, for them to understand both the content and the difficult words. Diana, so, apologies to interrupt again, but we see a Word document. Is that really? what you're supposed to see? Yeah, an Armenian no. Word document. Oh my God, no, 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 no. Okay, just a second. <laughs> okay. Mm, okay, how about this one? Can you see the book now? Yes, now we oh, see Sorry that. about that, okay, sorry. So, uh, so this, is the list, this is the reading, and in the reading task, uh, what we expect to do is to uh, read, the read the reading text passage by passage and as a class so that teacher can explain difficult words if there is any, and they can discuss each passage uh, so that it is more apprehensive to the students. And you see this is the reading, and after that we have a multiple choice exercise here. So students need to uh, choose the correct answer and give also short answers here. So uh, after that, we've got speaking task. So this is really quite interesting task because let me show you, we've got a link here. Uh, can you see this? Can you see the link? Just a second, can you see? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ade. So uh, in this part, uh, we have a link here. So basically you take the students to, to, those, to that link and we have a questions here, a number of questions. So what you need to do is you just go to global temperature and, and here you so, show them some visuals. And this is the global temperature by NASA and this information is being updated uh, every year. So this is, this is the picture that we had in 1884 and teacher can go through it and show to the students what we have done to the planet Earth and this is in 2019. And based on this information and whatever the students saw, uh, they can discuss these questions that we have in the speaking test. So in this exercise, we only try to uh, give them information. We try to make sure that they understand the problem deeply and after that uh, we have another exercise in this exercise we focus on more uh, creative thinking and their um, how they can find solutions to the problems in this exercise they need to come up with ways how to use how to reduce global warming warming so this exercise is important in the case that you see here we have some grammar patterns should so this is a model verb that they learned in the previous units. And so we try to recycle that grammar patterns and all the phrases that they learned in each unit through different units and through different exercises so that they know the words for sure. So they do not forget the words. After that, we have some grammar tasks. And you see that here we teach them past simple with irregular, irregular verbs. Before this, they have done it past simple with regular verbs, so they are more or less familiar with it. So we, ma we make sure that uh, most commonly used words uh, we have here, and we make sure that they know verb two of those words so that can, they can correctly uh, produce some speech and ha have them in writing. And this is another exercise where we want to reinforce that grammar patterns through uh, environmental content. And as you see, we are reinforcing grammar, but at the same time, we are focusing on the content. And whatever they need to say or write down, it needs, uh, to, it needs to be on the environmental topic. And we want to make sure and we want to figure out whether they had environmentally friendly behavior or they didn't. And we hope that students will say the truth about their behavior. And after that, we've got the writing task. So in this writing task, we want to sum up 
both uh, their how environmentally be behavior they had during the previous year, uh, the previous week, and here you can see the days of the week. So they learn it also, and they need to produce some sentence level, some sentences over here about their behavior. So and yeah, this is it. After that, uh, we've got the project. So in, in every project, we have a number of words that the students also, again need to learn. You can find, you can see we have the icon TM and TS icon here, and the students can learn those words through the teacher slides. And then we have some steps how they are going to do the cleanup. So teachers can go through the steps. So they first of all need to choose the community and the places where they need to clean up. And it's always a good idea to use a bag that has already been used to be environmentally friendly. And yeah, this is it. And of course, at the end, they need to take some photos and share them. And at the end of each unit, the main unit, we have let's review part. And because this is the very last unit of the book, students need to kind of sum up everything that they have done in the, uh, in the book, they have learned in this book. And this is a jigsaw activity. We have six uh, topics and we need to divide students into groups and each group chooses one topic. And then they need to write down what, 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 what the problem is and then come up with solutions, how they can solve those problems locally and also globally. And this is it. I think this much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, thank you so much, Diana, for the great presentation. I wonder if Yushad has got anything to add as the second author of the textbook. Otherwise, we can focus on the questions which are coming through. Yeah, I think I, I could contribute during the Q&A part. Okay, fantastic. So uh, I compiled a number of new questions um, to you both. Uh, so one question from the Facebook Live session, actually. Uh, any chance or thought to make an online interactive um, textbooks so that the students and teachers can use, like videos, games associated with a book and any further books. So basically, do you have any plans to make this published book interactive? Uh, before this novel coronavirus, I think we didn't, but for now we can already start thinking about that. I think it would be easier to do that because, you know, we have the videos, what we need to do is just to add some games and there are tons of games online, we can choose some of them. Okay, sounds great. Uh, there is a technical question. Um, so uh, some of the part, uh, one of the participants actually tried to download the teacher's manual, and it seems that it's asking for permission password. Is it the case, or it is just a technical? Yes. Uh, no. I think if I'm not mistaken, Atavik is here, right? I think there is a password for that. And all those people, uh, I will ask her to share the password. And all those people who are interested to download the book. You just can send your email or contact information and we'll, we'll give you the password. Would it be possible to share your contact information with the participants so that they know who they need to contact for info? So this question is probably for- but What we will probably do online is, is uh, create, uh, if, if people want to download it, a, a message will come up how to get it. So we'll, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, we'll, okay. we'll so it will be taken care of. Fantastic. Yes. Um, so there is a question about the opportunity or the possibility to deliver a parallel project to teach the same topics in Armenian. Have you thought of that? To do this either bilingual or completely in Armenian? Um, that's a great idea. <laughs> Never thought of that. Maybe we could think about that because it would be great. Uh, so this is... Uh, this book, uh, only those children who have elementary level of English can learn with this book. So those who don't know English at a basic level, basically they can't learn with this book. So it's a great idea, thanks for that. Maybe we need to think about that. Okay. And um, there is another question which is concerned with special educational needs. And uh, so the, the participant is asking if you have considered collating the information in the book and turning it into an audio book to meet the special educational needs students as well. So all of this, I think, are really great ideas. Uh, uh, I mean, we can compile it so that we have all of those ideas and start to see which one is doable and start working on that. All of those ideas are really great. Thank you for that. 
we will see we will see mm -hmm. and there's another difficult question for you that i know <laughs> uh, so as the book focuses on teaching english through environmental problems there is a focus on naturalistic intelligence do you have activities that focuses on other intelligences uh, I'm sorry, artificial intelligence? We, we no, on... naturalistic intelligence. Naturalistic intelligence. Okay, not yet, I think, not yet. <laughs> Actually, there is, I think, because I mean, there is a, I bet it's a question that makes a reference to multiple intelligences of Gardner, I believe, and uh, I think there is a lot of, uh, a good mix of different intelligences including mathematical intelligence, for example, where students have to count how much electricity they use, water they use, bring it. There is uh, activities where they can create graphs and analyze those graphs in class. Um, so I, th I think from that point of view, it's diverse. Mm -hmm. It's not musical. I think probably <laughs> students that are into, you know, have strong musical intelligence. I don't That's remember the other if it's any music <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not musical, no. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, and I, I think, Shushan, uh, there, is, uh, there is a repetitive question about how schools or individuals or organizations can actually receive the printed book or the online book. So you mentioned that there is a form that needs to be filled in. So if you can reiterate the procedure for getting the printed book, that would be great. Okay, Just so the through. link to that distribution form is in the chat. Uh, chat room. I can uh, put it again. I can send it again um, to everyone. Let's see. Can you see that? It's a very simple form. Of course, it's in English. Uh, oh, no, actually, it's in Armenian and in English. It's in both languages. And all you need to do is put sort of your contact information, why you need the book, how many copies, and send it to us and we'll get back to you. So you, you need to make sure that you leave, uh, leave your contact information there. And it's okay if you're an individual or an organization, it doesn't matter uh, what you represent. Um, uh, there is a line for organizations, you can just skip over that. Uh, or just say that I'm an individual, I'm a teacher, whatever, for whatever purpose you want to use the book, just give us a very brief explanation and we'll get back to you. Okay, thank you so much. I think we're done with the questions. I hope I haven't missed anyone's. Let me just double check. Uh, we still have a couple of more minutes. If you've got any other questions, please feel free to post them. And of course, you're getting um, a lot of word of admiration, everyone, um, dear speakers, for the fantastic work that you've done. I just want to reflect that, that uh, it is being posted in the chat box. So uh, Dave, I may just quickly jump in. So I think there is a, I was going through the chat and uh, some people have ideas. Some of those were uh, voiced here. Thank you for, uh, for summarizing. I, I just want to encourage everyone, if you're interested in any form of uh, collaboration, partnership, expanding the project in different directions, to get in touch with Diana or me and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, a great opportunity for everyone to contribute. Um, again, um, so we have one new question, but it is a repeated one. Is there a free, uh, is there a fee for the hard copy? Any bulk discounts? But I just can answer to that, that it's, this is free of charge for everyone who's interested to use it. There's an online version which you can download using the link provided in the chat box. Uh, I suppose there is a password that needs to be provided to you, but that will be taken care of probably tomorrow or in the coming days. And if you need the hard copy, then you need to fill in the form, which is again provided in the uh, chat box. And then you can provide some basic information and AUA will provide you with the hard copies. Uh, I just just from yeah. my side, if I can add this, uh, a technical thing, we have 700 copies of the book, um, which is also download, downloadable and you can download it from the internet and, and, and you can use it as a textbook. So. Once we're out of the 700 copies, we might consider, depending on how, how, it, how well it works, we might consider reprinting it. So um, it, it's, it's, it's all sort of, uh, we have enough copies. We just need to know that it's being used uh, in, in a sensible way, that's, that's all. Great. And we have a suggestion to add this uh, textbook to AUA's digital repository. So I think that's something that will be done later. 
Okay, fantastic. Um, I think we can now wrap up. It's 7.25. Uh, so we are pretty much on, on track with the timing as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for your active participation and for all the suggestions made and questions asked. Thank you so much, dear speakers, for providing this very, very useful resource uh, with everyone and sharing it to the ELT community. Uh, and I hope everybody is leaving this session very happy and satisfied with this <laughs> new achievement. So thank you so much. Have a great evening. Stay and safe. Thank you, Ade, thank you. for moderating uh, uh, the thank session. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Ade. Yeah. Thank, yeah, you, yeah. Ade. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great evening.